Holly George, it's your sister up. Tom said it really What was. did you say, Tom? You hit me on the head. George, should be good for the alone. Chrissy! Can you walk Tom to school this morning? God. Please. Tom, go and put your shoes on. Do you want some toast, Chrissy? No, thanks. You should eat something. I don't want anything. Please eat something. I'll get something at college. If I don't know now, I'm going to miss the bus. Promise. Promise. Tom, shoes. George, wait for Tom. He hasn't even got his shoes on. Yes, he has, Tom. If you don't get your shoes on right now, have you got your homework? Yes. You sure? Yes. Have a good day. Tomorrow, where are my shoes? Oh, Christ's sake, I get fed up with this every bloody day. You're going to be late. Look, there they are. Under the table where you abandoned them last night. Bag. What are we going to do today? The usual. Okay. Come on then. You okay? Stop asking me that. Sorry. It's lovely. Why do we always come here? It's quiet. The feeling of wide open space helps clear my head. Not much of a birthday though, is it? Tell the story. It was such a surprise. We decided three kids was more than enough and then suddenly I was pregnant. Your father wasn't very amused. Anyway, something takes over and of course we were looking forward to your arrival. So why did it happen? I don't know. Just one of those things they said. I was bleeding and your dad took me into hospital. They hooked me up to all sorts of monitors. I could hear you. Your little heart still holding on. Knowing it was hopeless. But eventually you would die and I couldn't do anything about it. I begged them to try and find a way, but they said there was nothing they could do. Then they left me in a room alone to wait for the inevitable. After a few hours, your 
father went home to be with the others. And then you just slip slowly out of me. A small, helpless, perfect, a tiny little baby. Same as all the others, screwed up and wrinkled. Tiny little fingers, tiny little toes. And the funny thing is, you were clearly one of us, you know, part of our family. But you were utterly devoid of any life. And then they wrapped you up in a paper towel and took you away. What time was that? About midnight. I lay awake all night thinking about you in some cold, dark room and I couldn't bear it. And then I thought about all your brothers and sisters warm and safe at home. And how much they would have adored you and how much you were going to miss not ever having them love you or look after you, or laugh at you, or hold your hand. In the morning I asked if I could see you, so they brought you in. And I just held you in my arms, gently rocking you into your long sleep. I think I may have sung quietly to you. And then they took you from me forever. No funeral? No. I'm sorry. What about Dad? Oh, I don't know. I think it's difficult for men in a different way. Oh, they're helpless, really. I think he just preferred not to think about it. I mean, he was supportive, but deep down he didn't know how to react. and just made all the right noises, which the time was right. I think about it less and less now. And then I feel guilty. It's like you never existed. I didn't. Yes, you did. But I died inside you. I know, but I carried you for five months and could feel every kick and every movement. You were very much alive. Anyway, everyone was suitably sympathetic. But it's not as if you haven't got children already, was the usual response. Fucking idiots. Why do they feel they have to say anything? It's got nothing to do with it. Well, I'm sorry is enough, but they have to follow it up with some brainless platitude. <laughs> so here I am. Stuck between moving on and not denying you ever happened. On every one of your birthdays, I come up here and sit and think about what happened. But 
Now I find the times between thinking about you are getting longer and longer. And so I think this is the last time. You'll be fine. I see you anyway. And your brother, you would have looked a lot like him. But of course, I will always love you. Thank you.